okay Uh, so we have uh, proved uh, and explained uh, the Taylor expansion for uh, multivariable functions. Uh, we have two times two kind of remainder. The first is the theorem for fixed x, uh, that is a Lagrange remainder, and uh, the corollary is a piano remainder. That is the h is not fixed; h goes to a, uh, and uh, we consider the asymptotic behavior. Of f, it turns out that uh, if f is say k near a, then as h goes to zero, f a plus h will be a sum from l from zero to k l. F J one J L A H J one H J L plus uh the middle term uh that is our eta h in the corollary but uh, usually because because eta h minus divided by h k goes to zero usually we denote this eta h by higher order of h k. So this is the piano uh, remainder form of a Taylor expansion. But uh, this formula uh, looks also somewhat, uh, of course, it is very elegant, but uh, maybe for some students, uh, you will find uh, the notation, uh, in particular this one, uh, horrible, hold, right? Uh, so uh, we, we consider an example, uh, example. Uh, we consider the case k equal to 2. Uh, that is, f is c2 near a. Let's see what this, what's this. Um, so, f a plus h. Uh, so this is sum l from 0 to 2 plus square because k equal to 2. Uh, so we need to, this sigma sum has three terms, L equal to zero, L equal to one, and L equal to two. Uh, L equal to zero means that we have uh, take no differentiation. Then this is the function F itself. So this is F A. L equal to one, L equal to one, this is F J one. A. H J one, J one is an index. J uh, one is an index, so you can uh, simplify this by F J A H J. Anyway, J one run from J one run from one to n, right? So uh, it, it is not uh, uh, essential to use another notation to denote it. So we we use J. Uh, we have to use J1, J2, JL because we have so many, uh, so many index. But now we just have only one index, J1. So we are not, uh, bothered to use, uh, J1, but J is sufficient. But what's this? This is exactly the inner product of the gradient of F at A under the vector H. So this is the term corresponding to L equal to 1. And, uh, for the term, uh, maybe I will write, uh, well, I, I write here. I need to make space plus FAH. Okay, I erase this. I move this to the next line. Okay, so for the term uh, k equal to 2, k equal to 2, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, F I J A H I H J. Okay. Uh, J one we for 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 L equal to two. We have J one J two. We as before. Uh, we use we we use I. We replace J one by the index I. 
解图版的 index 解。So the the error equal to two term in this expansion is this. Uh, of course, we we have used the i instance summation. Uh, so if you like, you need to write i c a from one to n. Okay. So this is the error equal to two term in the piano uh, in the Taylor expansion. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, this uh, this sum can be written in an elegant form. We introduce a notation called the Hessian. Hessian matrix of F at A denoted by what's this? This matrix is the all the second order derivative of F. Uh, so we 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 organize the order the n square. We have n square second order derivative of F. We organize this n square second order the derivative in a nice form uh, to to construct an square matrix. Uh, so this is f11, f1n, fn1, fnn. Okay. So this is a matrix whose elements are the uh, second order derivative of f at this point a. And we call this metric the Hessian matrix. Then using the Hessian matrix, our L equal to one term in the Taylor expansion can be written as uh, H trans, trans, uh, transport. Okay, so this is a row vector and the square matrix and then a square, uh, a column vector. And the, the, the result is a real number. Okay, so this is the second term of our uh, Taylor expansion. So we have, remember the L equal to 2, therefore there is a 2 here, then H transport, isometric, then H. So this is the uh, second order term. Ah, finally, we have the remainder term. So, so this is the case when k equals 2. The Taylor expansion of f, uh, we have uh, four terms. Uh, the last term is the remainder term. Uh, then the, the first the three terms uh, give us a polynomial, a valuable polynomial. Uh, I write the formula next page. f belongs to C2. Then f a plus h is f a plus h. F A H plus H transport. Okay, so the the principal part of the right hand side, that is the sum of the first of the three term, is a quadratic function. Okay. So uh, a C2 function can be approximated by a quadratic function. Uh, the remainder is uh, small enough. Okay. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we consider extreme value. Using the Taylor expansion, uh, we Taylor formula we established in the previous lecture. Uh, this is a very useful uh, uh, result in uh, differential calculus. Okay, so before uh, study extreme value, uh, we first record some result about symmetric matrix from linear algebra. Uh, a matrix, real matrix, n by n, symmetric. Uh, for given a symmetric n by a metric, we can construct a function q 
the function is given by qx is x transport ax. Okay, x, if we write x as a column vector, then x transport is a row vector, and then our square matrix, uh, the multiplication result is a real number. Okay, so this defines the function qx. Uh, of course, this is also the inner product of ax and x. And uh, if you write aig and x, uh, to be x1, x2, xn, then uh, it is easy to see that this is aij, xi, xj. Here, we use the Einstein convention. Summation convention. Uh, if you don't like the Einstein summation convention, you can add a sigma summation symbol in front of this. Okay? So, this is a function given by the symmetric metric A. Uh, so in linear algebra, we see that we know that A, A has an, uh, real eigenvalues. Uh, the eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix, uh, real metric is, uh, are all, always a uh, real. Okay. So A has an real eigenvalue. Uh, denoted by lambda 1, lambda n, okay? <clears throat> of course, this n uh, eigenvalues might be equal, maybe lambda 1 equals lambda 2, uh, okay? So, the corresponding unit eigenvectors unit eigenvectors uh, 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 denoted by y from i, i from 1 to n, uh, is a basis, is a base, orthogonal, also normal, uh, that is they are uh, per perpendicular to each other, okay, of rn. A basis of Rn. Um, and also, for any x in Rn, we have lambda 1 norm of x square will not greater than qx and lambda n. Okay? All these are known from linear algebra. And uh, if you like, we can also prove the equal sum of, for example, prove this inequality. So, uh, x can be written as x i epsilon i. Therefore, q x is q um, uh, x is um, x i epsilon i. This is x, and uh, a x is. Uh, because epsilon i is uh, eigenvector, so ax is xi lambda i epsilon i. Okay. So x x j lambda j epsilon j. Then we use epsilon i and the epsilon j is delta i j, which means if i equal to j, then it's one. Otherwise, it's zero. So we see that this is. Uh, lambda i xi square. Uh, but lambda i, of course, is not greater than lambda y. Okay, so this proved this uh, uh, very useful, uh, very useful inequality here. Okay. So this is, uh, I believe you you have learned this in linear algebra. Uh, 